Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, it was a great night. Um, happy with our selections at four and forty-four. Uh, we were ready to pick in June, and now we are in November. Um, staff did an unbelievable job collecting information, watching film, constant updates. Um, you know, changes we were able to adjust and adapt uh, to schedules, addressing uh, some of the prospects. Um, Select, selecting uh, Patrick, um, who's, uh, you know, physical specimen, you know, one of the youngest prospects in the draft class. Uh, defensive versatility is what we liked. Uh, long arms, big hands, you know, such an upside and potential. You know, this is what the NBA is today. He can play from one through five. Uh, played point guard in high school. Humble kid that is uh, mature beyond uh, his years. Um, then at 44, we selected uh, Marko Simonovic um, uh, from Serbia. He plays for Mega, um, seven-footer that can handle and shoot, uh, very versatile, can pass, runs the floor, uh, gets to the free throw a lot, high basketball IQ, you know, can do a little bit of everything. At that size, is very unique. He's a seven footer, so place with pace and high motor. So we were very happy with our both selections. So I can take uh, questions now, Matt. All right, thanks, Arturis. Darnell Mayberry has the first question. Go ahead, Darnell. Yeah, uh, thanks, Matt. Uh, Arturis, I'm, I'm, my question is for about Patrick. Uh, to, the, to us in the outside world, it seemed like uh, a lot of people thought that his stock rose over the last few weeks. Is that true? And just from you guys' perspective, uh, what do you think led to that? Did, did his stock rise and did, what, what led to that? I just think that uh, the more study you do on Patrick, um, uh, the more you realize it's, it's, you know, like I said in the opening statement that this is what the NBA is today, uh, that uh, we need players in our league that can play multiple positions. And he's able to do that. Uh, he's an elite athlete. Uh, he showed, uh, you know, he showed that in college. Um, he wasn't as consistent, but he was such a, uh, you know, uh, on campus in Florida State. He was at such a young age and started, you know, to pick up at the end of the season. Um, and we were able to spend uh, some time with him, uh, interview him uh, to get to know him a little bit. And, uh, you know, for us, he was the guy to get. Thank you. Our next question comes from Cheryl Ray Stout with WBEZ. Go ahead, Cheryl Ray. Hi, Aturis. At what point in the process did you target him that, that you knew that this was the guy that you wanted? And how difficult was it during this time of trying to figure out how to put this all together? Well, you know, we studied those those guys for such a long time, you know, from film because we couldn't see him play right since March. Uh, so we studied a lot of film, a lot of video. We were ready, obviously, to select uh, uh, in in June, uh, but you know, we got the extra five months to do our diligence. And the more we were digging uh, in his background, and you know, we were able to actually uh, see him. Um, uh, you know, that's how we came to our decision that this is our guy. And, um, yeah, like I said, you know, um, athleticism, versatility, multiple positions, you know, and obviously the fact that he was – his his ball handling is something that is very underrated and people didn't see it in college where for three years in high school he played point guard. So I was very impressed. Thank you. Eric Woodward with ESPN's up next. Go ahead, Eric. What's up, AK? How you doing, man? How you doing? Uh, you know, obviously with this being the first draft and, you know, the new regime in, in you know, in, in the roles, how big did you guys feel like it was to, to set the tone with this pick to get the right guy? You know, was it any extra pressure or just this whole process? Did you feel like you had to pick the right guy? Well, Eric, I never picked that high, you know, and in, in, in the draft, uh, when you pick four, you need to like four guys. Um, in a way, it was a little bit easier than liking 20 guys. And, 
So, you know, it was, uh, w- we realized that, uh, you know, you're not, hopefully we're never going to be in the situation again and pick that high. Um, so, you know, this is, this was the opportunity to get it right. Uh, because the, the projection of, uh, players picked in the top five is much higher it drops significant uh, significantly uh, afterwards so we we wanted to get it right and Patrick was our guy thanks man next question comes from Cody Westron with 670 the score go ahead Cody uh, how seriously did you consider trading up how seriously did you consider trading down and in those dis- what did you learn about asking prices around the league so you know from doing our diligence and calling around the league the perception of around the league about certain players was very uh, you know distinct you know you go from team to team certain teams would have a player uh, at five uh, and certain teams have that same player at 20 so there was a lot of uh, split opinions around you know, so in order to kind of back, you really have to like players uh, moving back. And uh, we didn't feel comfortable, you know, doing that. And, um, you know, at four, we're really happy, uh, you know, in that position. And because we, we knew we had a chance to pick Patrick and we just stayed there and uh, we got our player. Did you seriously consider trading up? Uh, we did not. Uh, we we always were waiting for any opportunities, but you know, we we actually were really happy to be at four. All right, Mike McGraw of the Daily Herald. You're up. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, Torres. I was curious. What do you remember the first time you saw Patrick Williams play in person? And was he a guy who really jumped out to you then, or was it a matter of his improvement from? early last season to, you know, when you saw him before the draft that stood out? So I knew that he got to Florida State campus when he was 17 years old and, uh, you know, watch his improvement through the year uh, from game to game. Uh, He became more aggressive, uh, uh, took more charge and, you know, attacked the basket more, shot the, you know, the ball better. Um, You know, we watched a ton of – you know, interviews even prior to college and, you know, uh, to get a player of 19, just turned 19 and, you know, in August uh, to be that level of you know, maturity at this point and, uh, you know, willingness to learn, um, uh, it's hard to find. So, you know, m- the more we studied Patrick, the more we liked him. Casey John with NBC Sports. Chicago. Go ahead, KC. Arturis, how are you doing? How are you, KC? Good. Uh, what is going to be the philosophy with, with Marco? I mean, the, the knee-jerk reaction was draft and stash guy, which I asked you about in August, and you said, wait till the draft and you'll find out. Or are you going to bring him over and give him a chance? Uh, yeah, so we're going to stash him uh, for, you know, at least a year. Um, he's going to stay there. Um, but we were really excited uh, to draft him um, because he's another guy that uh, improved uh, this year. You know, he was 51% from the floor, 41 from a three. You know, he averaged uh, 16 and 10 uh, in Adriatic League. Um, and, you know, the, it, it was a very unique ability for us to see him because – uh, you know, there's no other leagues going on, you know, nobody's playing. And, uh, you know, we were, we were able to actually to see his games, at least on, on video. We, we were not, not able to travel, but, you know, so and after collecting all the information, you know, we again identify Marco as our target um, at 44. And I have a quick follow up on another subject. Uh, can you explain the decision-making process behind your uh, qualifying offers to your restricted free agents? Uh, I think we were addressing that, looking at free agency and, uh, you know, looking at the things that we need to, to add shooting. Um, and, you know, those probably decisions were, were there. Thank you. Yep. 
Sam and obviously, and obviously the roster spots were limited, so it's going to be really picky in free agency. Um, even even though we're told um, the NBA is a positionless game, yep. um, what position would you, when the game starts, everybody sort of takes a position. What, what position would you say uh, he is? And also, uh, th does this tell us anything or looking forward towards your philosophy or what is ahead for the future in the Bulls, given that he's so young, at least for now, is more a defensive player who's uh, playing with a mid-range game? I, I think uh, his perception was, you know, I didn't agree with perception that uh, people have of him because they, they thought he's a raw athlete and he wasn't skilled. And when I saw his skill level and ball handling and shooting and ability to pass, I, I would disagree that he's, you know, he's just that, you know, raw athlete that, you know, uh, he knows how to play. Uh, he just knows how to play. So uh, I think another, you know, you know, he he's a versatile defender, so he can guard from one to five. So I don't even know, Sam, what position he is. He's going to identify that when he gets here to Chicago and, uh, you know, and Coach Donovan, he's going to be able to use him. He's gonna plug him in, whatever he feels like he's going to be able to perform right now. But like I said, you know, he, he, you know, he can play multiple positions. Uh, you know, you, if you watch Florida state games, you know, even, you know, after baskets, he would be, uh, you know, full court pressing on top, you know, guards, you know, and, and, and that's a very unique skill for, you know, such a, you know, uh, athletic and, you know, big player. I want to add something just quickly, just one, one quick, uh, you're sort of describing the point guard in high school, uh, defensive uh, playing up court like that. You're sort of describing Scotty Pippen. Is that a comparison? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Scotty's he was a very good player uh, in NBA. Um, I, I just think that uh, when he played uh, point guard in high school, he was very small. So he, he, I think he grew like eight inches in high school. Uh, but he kept his uh, skill set. And that is valuable. So when he got to Florida State, you know, he, he was obviously ready to do uh, whatever coach is telling him to do. But I, th I, I think I, I, I saw growth uh, during uh, during the year and he was taking more and more responsibility. You know, the season ended abruptly. Uh, but like I said, you know, we were able for six months to analyze his game and then able to uh, to see him. All right, next question's with uh, Jamal Collier from the Chicago Tribune. Go ahead, Jamal. Hey, hey, Arturis. Um, I just think all rookies are gonna have a bit of an adjustment with the shorter short turnaround, no summer league, et cetera. Uh, and Williams one of the younger rookies in this entire uh, draft. How do you think that adjustment is gonna uh, go for him? And do you, do you kind of envision it taking maybe some time for him to, to make an impact or can you make one right away? No, I think uh, it'll take him some time, but I think he already knows a lot of players on the team. And, you know, one of them is obviously Kobe. Uh, they're both from North Carolina. Uh, they know each other from AU ball, um, uh, familiar uh, with each other. So I think uh, transition is going to be a little bit easier. Uh, but again, I mean, you know, you come, you know, you got only one year of college basketball, you come into the NBA. So it's going to be an adjustment. But he's type of kid that, you know, he's, he's ready to learn. He's very inquisitive, ask questions, uh, what I can do better. And I saw huge growth over a very short period of time. So I'm not worried about that. Uh, another position I think that a lot of people were sort of had their eye on for you all in this draft was point guard and just sort of a playmaker. Uh, is that a position that you think you necessarily want to address or going forward and free agency at some point? So yeah, so we, we're going to sit down tomorrow. We're going to, you know, spend some time talking about agency. Again, you know, we're trying to, uh, you know, take one thing at a time. And we got through this draft, which is, you know, obviously we were very excited. Uh, we will address uh, all the questions about the roster uh, in free agency. Rob Schaefer, you're up next. Go ahead. Hey, Arturis. Um, wondering with, with the 
talk of a partnership between you and um, Billy, I'm, I'm wondering how much, uh, and even talking with Patrick and throughout the pre-draft process, how much his role with the team has been discussed um, going into the season and kind of how you see all the skills and the attributes that you've described fitting with this roster and helping this roster currently. Well, I think, you know, the guys are just getting in a building. We just had a, obviously, you know, the in-market bubble uh, for a very short time. Um, Billy had a very few days, uh, you know, to spend with the team. So those things and those questions are going to be answered once we, uh, you know, start, you know, getting in the gym consistently. And uh, once Patrick gets here, you know, we'll spend time with him. Um, so looking forward uh, for him to get here and you know he's he can't wait to get to Chicago uh, it's a very short time between uh, now and uh, you know training camp December 1st so we're gonna try to uh, the, the learning curve gonna be very steep so we're gonna try to do our best uh, to you know uh, integrate him in our, in our practice and uh, one more from me it, it was just reported that um, you guys are possibly looking to sign a Devon Dotson, who's a point guard from Kansas. He's mm -hmm. an undrafted free agent. I was wondering if you could um, confirm that possibly and kind of uh, describe what you see in him as a potential fit. Too. We'll, we'll address that during the free agency. So, and we, we can talk about that in uh, more detail. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Darnell, you're up again. Go ahead. Yeah, Arturis, um, it's a kind of a two-part question. Uh, one, this was your first draft night as the lead decision maker, and I'm wondering what you took away from it. How did it go for you, your impressions overall? And then from your staff standpoint, uh, your first time with this staff, uh, just impressions there and, and how you think it all went with, with the group. Well, I overall, I like draft because, you know, I like that kind of uh, intensity and pressure. Uh, because that's probably as good as you can get to playing days. And, you know, that kind of intensity uh, drives me. Um, so that's about the draft. Uh, it's our Super Bowl, right? You know, all your staff is working to be a player and to draft them. Uh, and I think uh, our staff did a wonderful job prior to the draft and during the draft. Uh, you know, with exchanging information and uh, getting ready to, you know, uh, you know, to draft, uh, draft players. So I think overall, uh, tonight, uh, we, we drafted players that we were targeting and it's, uh, it, it doesn't happen very often. Thank you. Casey Johnson, go ahead, Casey. Yeah. And just real quick, Arturis following up on Darnell, cause I was going to ask something similar, but did, did it feel any different? I mean, this was, I know you've been in a lot of draft rooms and you've worked for different organizations, but this is the first time you're in the lead role for, for a new well, franchise. So did it feel any different on a personal level for you? Well, it, it's special to me, you know, and, you know, I, I received uh, a ton of texts from executives around the league and they were all telling me, enjoy your night, you know, and uh, that's what I did, you know, and it's special to me. It's, uh, uh, my first night as a you know, lead exec of Chicago Bulls, and, uh, you know, I thought it was a very successful night, so I'm happy about it. Thank you.